Hi everybody, welcome to this week's assembly. After our fantastic musical number last week, this week we are going intergalactic and it is an absolute privilege to have Helen Sharman, the first ever British astronaut in space, here to talk to us all today. Helen spent a full eight days in space, so I can't wait to hear everything that she's got to tell us about her adventures. The first time I ever felt like an astronaut wasn't really until the day of the launch. Um, although I'd been training for many months before then, you know, if I'd not done very well or if I'd even become ill, then my backup would have flown into space instead of me. So I remember putting on my spacesuit on that day of the launch and checking that it would hold the oxygen inside if we somehow leaked air from the spacecraft. And then, only then, I really knew I was going to space. Now, my mission had been arranged specially to put the first person from the United Kingdom into space. Um, I never thought it was going to be possible for me to go into space. You know, when I grew up, um, I came from a very normal family, I went to a very normal school. Nobody I knew had ever been into space. Um, nobody from the country had been into space. It was just no way was that going to be possible for me. So I didn't even think about it until one day, I was driving my car home from work and I heard on my car radio of a wonderful new opportunity, something that had never been around before for people like me. And there was a job of being an astronaut. Now, I never thought I'd get chosen. I always assumed somebody else would get the job. And in fact, I almost didn't apply because of that. You know, what was the point if somebody else was going to get the job? Why would they choose me anyway? But I thought that if I didn't at least have a go, if I didn't try it, there was no chance. It was worth a go. So I applied for the job. And of course, there was lots of training when I eventually had got that job. Um, 18 months of training altogether, um, going through all the things we needed to do for the space mission. After months of training then, it was the launch day. So I put on my spacesuit and with my crew we made our way out to the rocket, up a few steps and then a lift took us right to the top. And we nestled into our spacecraft, into our seats. In fact, I'll show you what it's like actually inside the spacecraft. The seats aren't so much sitting up, but they're more kind of lying back like this, with your knees bent up a bit, because that's the easiest way to take the G-forces. Um, we settled into our seats, strapped in. There were three of us quite close to each other, but wearing our spacesuits were quite bulky, and our elbows overlapped a bit, so we were almost touching. Um, we stayed like this for about two and a half hours before the launch, going through all the checks, and then finally we were ready. There was a clock display countdown, and we could see that 10, 9, eight, you can count with me if you like, everything's ready, so all we have to do is wait, five, four, three, two, one, rocket engine fire, the gantry pulls back, and we're off into space. Now it's lumpy and bumpy because there are different rocket stages. As one stage is jettisoned, the next stage kicks in. We had about 3G during the launch, so I felt three times as heavy as I do normally on Earth. And the whole launch it didn't last very long. The whole thing was over in just under nine minutes. And then when the final rocket stage was jettisoned, immediately I started to feel weightless, but I was still strapped into my seat and had to remain strapped in for another two or so hours after that, checking that we weren't leaking any air out, until then I could unstrap from my seat and just float out. And it was the most natural, relaxing feeling. I loved just floating around and feeling weightless. I'm going to go back to where I was sitting before because actually when we're just floating like that, I mean, it's just the most weird feeling because you know that gravity is still there. Gravity hasn't gone. And if gravity had disappeared or somehow, some, somehow I'd 
escaped gravity, then I would have just carried on floating off into space forever. I mean, gravity was keeping me inside the spacecraft, and me and the spacecraft actually pulled in towards the center of the Earth, and we were falling towards the center of the Earth all the time. But the rocket had made us travel along really fast, of course. I mean, that's the idea of rockets. And we were moving along at eight kilometers every second. So if you translate that into uh, miles per hour, it's 17 and a half thousand miles per hour. That's so fast, so that as we fell towards the center of the Earth, as we fell, the Earth's surface just curved away below us. So we ended up falling round the Earth. And that's why astronauts feel weightless. Not because gravity's gone, because gravity's there. Gravity is pulling us in towards the center of the Earth, but we're falling around it and we feel weightless. And it is the most natural, relaxing feeling you can imagine. You know, um, I forgot what it's like to have weight. I loved somersaults. You know, just being able to tumble slowly for as long as I wanted without stopping. It's just a magical feeling. And we can use this feeling of weightlessness. Sometimes we call it microgravity. Um, but we can use that for our experiments. Of course, that my, was my job, was to do experiments in space. But it's not just work. You know, there's all sorts of things astronauts have to do. We have to do exercise to keep healthy, of course. Um, we can play games. But one of the things that we you know, always love to do at the end of a working day was that we would just, all together as a crew, gather round the biggest window we could find and look out. We could look out at I mean, the most amazing views of the Earth. Um, absolutely fabulous. I remember seeing, you know, you can see the difference between where the land meets the sea. Um, the clouds were so bright because the sunlight was reflecting from the top of the clouds back up to us in space. I had to scrunch up my eyes to look at them for long. Um, we would go all the way round the Earth in 90 minutes. In fact, knowing that, we can calculate how many times a day a space station goes all the way round the Earth. How many orbits does it make in 24 hours? So have you got your calculators? So I'm going to get mine. Um, so uh, if you haven't got a calculator, you can write it down, or if you really like mental arithmetic, you can do it in your head. So first of all, we need to work out the number of minutes in a day. Okay, so I'm going to turn on my calculator. So there are 24 hours in a day, aren't there? So 24 hours. In each hour, how many minutes? 60 minutes. So it's 24 times 60. That will give us the number of minutes in a day. That equals 1,440 minutes. Okay, so keep that number. So if there's that many minutes in a day, and it takes us 90 minutes to make one orbit of the Earth, how many orbits can we do in 1,440 minutes? Well, that's going to be 1,440 minutes divided by 90 minutes equals, what do you get? 16. So I orbited the Earth 16 times every day. There were 16 sunrises and 16 sunsets in every day for me on board the space station. Beautiful. Now, there's some questions from Francesca Joslin, who's a year six student in Hampshire. Hi, Helen. My first question is, why do you think you were chosen over everyone else to go to space? So if you're going to go into space, you need to have an understanding of science or engineering or medicine and to really be able to communicate well. My mission was going to be all done in the Russian language, so I needed to understand some foreign languages as well and be physically fit. But I think what's really important is that ability to get on well with different people um, and to be able to work in teams, to be able to communicate well with each other. And that was a big part of the selection process, how well we could work together with others. My second question is, were you scared? And if you were, how did you get over it? You know, I think we are scared of the unknown. 
the things we don't know much about. And my training was so good um, that really it taught me everything I needed to know. I understood what was happening. I knew what I had to do. So there was just no need to be scared. And I don't think none of any of us was scared at all during that mission. Um, I always think now, if, if I'm a bit worried about something, if I'm anxious, I'll find out more about it. And then it really does help me to stop being quite so worried. My last question is, what is your best memory on your space mission? I think out of, I have to choose one thing, um, it would be my crew. Um, we'd been living and working together in a very confined environment. We trusted each other with our lives, getting to the space station especially. And those people became really my best friends. Um, it's a, such a wonderful relationship that astronauts have with their crew. And the hardest thing of my whole space mission was when I had to return to Earth and leave the space station and I had to leave my crew to continue their mission in space. And saying goodbye to them was the hardest part of my mission. So brilliant questions, Francesca. And I'd just like to finish with a thought about some of the views outside the space station. Now, I didn't go out and do a spacewalk, but looking out of the window. Now, I've talked a bit about the Earth already, but then when we looked the other way, you know, out into space, at first I could just see blackness because my eyes were used to these very bright lights inside the space station. But then gradually, as I looked, my eyes got used to the darkness and the stars started to appear and I could just see millions and billions of stars. You know, I know that stars are being sucked into black holes, some are exploding in supernovae, new stars are being created and I knew when I looked at those stars, not that I could see all of these explosions and things, but when I looked at the stars I knew that I was there in space having that wonderful view because I had applied for a brand new opportunity that before I thought was impossible. So I think we all need to keep on being curious, keep on learning and discovering and trying out new things so we can understand what's around us, improve life and have some amazing experiences. Hello, I'm Miss Brinkworth, one of the primary school teachers here at Oak National Academy. Now, after that fantastic Lion King sing-along last week, we're feeling all musical and so are you. So we'd love to share some of your musical endeavours that you've been sending in. We have children who have made their own instruments and children who are really showing off their musical talents. We're feeling super inspired for all things spacey and hopefully you are too. We'd love for you to show some of your space art with us. Maybe you could make a rocket for some things that you find around the house or maybe you could paint or draw the night sky. Please share these things with us and remember to tag us on social media which is hashtag learnwithoak or use at oak national. Thank you very much. Where did you eat yours? A lot of colours and some pasta and some plastic and I use plastic balls and some stickers. Next week 
We've got some special guests who are going to talk to you about all of the things that Oak National Academy has planned for the half-term holiday. But until then, keep listening to your parents and your teachers, keep trying really hard with all of your lessons, and we will see you next week.